stand still. I really, really can't wait. Joey, yeah. how are you feeling? Super excited. I'm a bit nervous how are at you the same feeling? Time. Amazing. <laughs> So the idea was to take a multidisciplinary group of, uh, of students, of engineers, of sports scientists as well, uh, some of our technicians and also a couple of members of staff to Zambia, to these two locations and carry out some humanitarian work. The reason we chose Zambia is the fact that, that we have a, a charity based at the university called the Discovery Charity. They work with the Siabonga Nutritional Group down in the, in the south of Zambia on humanitarian projects. Dr. Ben Evans, he took uh, obviously the remaining students, the two sports scientists, civil engineer and aerospace engineer, and one of the other technicians up north of the construction of an interlinking building between the orphanage and the school, the Tony Children's Orphanage. Obviously a lot of planning went into the trip. Uh, we had to plan firstly the layout of the building, what materials we were going to make it from, how much of each material we'd need, and all of that led to a cost and exercise so we could figure out how much the whole build would cost. And then we had to realise what equipment we needed to build the whole thing, uh, what equipment we already had at the university so we could take that with us, what they already had at the orphanage so we, we had to get in contact with them and make sure that they definitely had it there. Upon arrival, I was to take part of the team south to see if I'm good. and then was to take part of the team, Dr Evans was to take part of the team north to the Nintendo Children's Orphanage. We're off again. Here we are. We've got cheeky guys in the back, look. Yes. Cruise it. Here we are. Oh, There's the rest of the crew in the bus behind. There they go, look. One thing we noticed on the minibus ride up to Chingola was that about an hour outside the capital, the roads got a lot rougher. Uh, there was much less infrastructure. We looked out the window, it looked like a scene from The Lion King. In a way, a lot that we expected. Um, also, there was strangely a lot of things being sold on the side of the road, like cinder blocks, raw materials, doors. Uh, we found it pretty strange at first, but later on I actually came to rely on it a fair bit. From the people who watched you grow up When you're a member, go on your great adventure again I was part of a team that went south originally with Craig, Charmaine, Mike, James. Um, this is where we were surveying three sites for discovery. Here we are, the Sea of Onga Nutrition Group. This is where we've uh, doing our project. See the original building there. And the idea is to uh, do some surveying, some groundwork, look at the feasibility and help design a new training centre down in this area, down here. The, the sites we surveyed down there, there was three of them in total. Uh, the first two belong to um, Seabonga Nutritional Group. Uh, they are a non-profit organisation who aim to help um, vulnerable women and children in the Seabonga area. The third site was kind of like an off-the-cuff thing. Uh, we went to, to see a women's group out, out more towards like a rural community. And when we were there, they, they were giving us some issues they had uh, with um, getting water to their farm as well as um, for personal use as well. So when we were there, we just surveyed the, the gradient of the land to see whether a less mechanical solution was possible. My role as a chemical engineer was just to have a look and see what the water quality was like down there. So what we did was that we went out and took samples that were taken from different parts of the city. Uh, what we managed to get a chance to do as well is that one of our liaisons there, Jeffrey, managed to talk to some of the women in the surrounding areas. So we got water samples from them as well. And we even got the chance to visit one of the water treatment plants there. And while we were there, we found out about how things work and how they operate. And we found out about the fact that they have a system that's been there since the 70s and that they use asbestos piping to pump the water around the city. Um, there are plans to make a new plant in the future, but it may not be something that's viable. So since then, I've come back and we'll be testing the water for things like biological content and heavy metal presence. And once that's all done, we're going to report it and then send it back for the Swansea Sea Longer partnership and then they'll see what to do with it after that. So after the three days of surveying we did, um, we decided to reward ourselves as well as thank the people that helped us while we were there. This included uh, Christopher, who was a local civil engineer who worked on um, their dam, which they have out there. 
and also Jeffrey, who was our host. Um, so we decided to thank them by having a barbecue. Uh, it was a really like relaxed atmosphere where we could actually get to know them on a really personal level, as well as discussing um, things from the local economy to issues they're having with promoting students to go through civil engineering. And after that, we got to go to Chingola and join the rest of the group. And on the way up there, we happened to come across uh, wreckage, and it just happened to be what was probably a private plane of some kind, maybe. And you're not going to believe what is over here. You are not going to believe. Look at that. It's been stripped of everything. Um, by working in the morning and then obviously knowing the orphans better in the afternoon, getting to know the children better, uh, was really nice and we got to know names and had one-on-one -on -one games and they are really appreciative of us being there and uh, yeah I think it was just a really nice atmosphere to be in. I do work with kids when I'm at home but obviously these are different and they're all, there's loads of them and they're all crazy and fun. And, I definitely gain confidence in controlling them and I also think by go going on a trip that I'd quite like to be a PE teacher I really enjoyed them learning and listening to what I have to say. One of the lovely things about a trip like this is, is getting to know some of the local people and we were actually staying at the orphanage site where we were working uh, which meant we got to know so many of the children who were staying there. Uh, and these are children who have so little in comparison with us and yet they are some of the happiest and most content uh, kids you could, you could ever meet. So we had some amazing times playing games with the children um, and just hanging out with them and getting to know them a little bit. Um, and that was just a, a lovely part of the project. When we got there on the Saturday, we noticed that the foundations had not been dug to like how we wanted them dug. They were half as deep, nowhere near as wide as they should have been. So. We got straight cracking on with that. Um, that took a day off our program. So once we got them set, we started blocking up. It was a good job we got the concrete in that day as well because the next day it was like torrential rain. So but yeah, we, we cracked on with the, the brickwork, got up to finish floor level. Um, managed to get it backfilled uh, the same day. Um, we had to use hand tamps to get the compaction because we couldn't source a vibration plate anywhere. Once we got that done, we started bricking up the external walls, uh, which took about four days hand mixing the cement, uh, they're all funny shaped bricks, they're mud bricks made for the locals. It's Sunday morning, a day of rest for most people, however our team are on a tight schedule, so you can see the construction is coming together quite nicely. So on the very last day that we were staying um, at the Matende Orphanage, uh, that was so the day before we were all flying home. Um, we, we weren't sure if we were actually going to get the building finished. The roof still wasn't on. Um, at lunchtime there was a point where I just thought we're going to have to leave here with this building unfinished. Um, but everybody really dug deep. We did an incredible afternoon of work. We set up some floodlights and worked right into the night and actually ended up getting the building finished at about one o'clock in the morning. Swansea Engineering, University um, And it was just a lovely moment then when we just all sat inside the building, just looked up um, at this, this building that we built in the space of 10 days. We had a beer and we just thought, we've done it. We've actually managed to achieve this. Uh, and that was a fantastic feeling. <laughs> the trip we all got the opportunity
opportunity to go on down to Livingston for a couple of days. Uh, we had a fantastic time there, it was a group of six of us, all of us, we didn't know each other before the trip but we become really strong friends during the, the two weeks we spent there and it's friendships that are going to last for a very long time hopefully. We started walking down the path towards the falls and it was just a spectacular view just from the very start. I think the scariest part of it was trying to swim across the river probably about 10 foot but the only thing stopping you from going off the waterfall was two little tiny pieces of rope but actually sitting on the edge itself wasn't wasn't as bad as, as I expected but yeah it's amazing views. And we also saw the bridge which goes over to Zimbabwe where loads of people were jumping off doing the bungee jump and four of us decided that we were going to do the jump. <laughs> Everybody else went before I did, which I just needed a bit of extra time because it was quite a scary sort of pre-jump experience. There's an experience you can't have anywhere else, so the opportunity to go and do that was absolutely amazing. When I, I now have something on my CV that employers will look at and that, that for them will tick off all kinds of boxes, teamwork, communication, uh, being able to adapt to a difficult environment, being able to work in an incredibly pressured environment, uh, being able to work in a team of people that you didn't, you don't, you're not friends with them all to begin with, but then you obviously build a good relationship with them over the time. So the goal of this, in an engineering sense, was to build this essentially a small building. Um, as an aerospace student, I didn't have much applicable theory. It was only the very fundamental engineering basics that I could really apply to this project. Uh, so one of the motivating factors about this was every day I was going to wake up in the morning and learn something new about civil engineering, construction and working on site. I think from this trip, aside from learning how to become probably a more well-rounded engineer as being part of a multidisciplinary team, I think it's also helped me on a personal level because it's all about working with people that you may not have otherwise come across before and also just learning new things from other people as well. Yeah, so I gained a lot from this trip, um, mainly my time management skills, uh, my, my ability to budget, um, given the, the set budget that we had, we had to deliver this, this building to them. Uh, also that confidence with myself, um, I'm confident now I can go on in the future and manage another project, similar size, maybe even bigger. I'd, I'd like to say thank you to the College of Engineering for actually giving us this opportunity, as well as to Ben and to James for organising the whole trip and to Mark and Mike as well, taking time out from work to come and help us, um, so I'm really grateful for that. I feel as though I gained just that building on teamwork skills, really, um, learning to live with other people um, in a different environment and experiencing another culture, which was one of the big reasons why I wanted to go out there. What a fantastic experience. The students were really inspiring, incredibly talented, um, and this is an opportunity now that we want to give to more of our students here in the College of Engineering. What I hope we've done is left a fantastic legacy um, in the communities that we partnered with in Zambia. Um, and this is something that we want to take forward over the next few years uh, here in the college.